Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video about insurance premiums, a book about the babysitters having to take care of kids during a wedding, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing David Matthew Barnes. David is a best-selling author and screenwriter, and plus, he reviews movies. Very happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me, Tiberius. Appreciate it. No problem. It. Well, today, we're going to start off with a video of the week, and this is going to be a bummer. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is bummer. This gives me about my next gen personal finance. This is a website that teaches you about personal finance. You can find it at ngpf.org and click on the arcade button. So, you start the game and they teach you how to play, but I'll give you a shorter version. You are a regular person and you have to buy insurance and live through life having big bummers, little bummers, and even trivia. Ooh, and they even have a jackpot. It's kind of like Wheel of Fortune, but worse. So then you start the game and you have to buy pet insurance first. Then you spin the Wheel of Bummer. And then, the wheel describes issues that occur that cost you money that insurance might be able to cover. Based on which level of insurance you purchase, you are told how much that event costs you. So then, after you spin the wheel four times, you next have to buy renter's insurance and spin the wheel of what? Bummer! And so forth for two more rounds. There are more issues to take away your money than we move to auto your or car insurance. Four more spins, and then all three of their insurances combined with six rounds to potentially lose all your money. So you better use a lot of those add-ons. Well, I got my dad to play it, and he was very good at it. He even got the jackpot, and I was so entertained when they only gave him a dollar. It reminded him the game was called Bummer, not Miracle. He had beaten the game, and I can't still and I still can't beat the last round with all of them. It's too hard for me. But NGPF, I think you made a mistake. On the renter's insurance, you put five dollars for the enhanced type, which is the third highest one. But thanks for the easy shortcut for the renters. My dad said it was not a mistake since the insurance did not cover any of your personal items. Well, I give Bummer 10 out of 10 stars because I really like this game getting my insurance questions down to zero. I really enjoy that it's challenging and keeps me on my toes. My dad said it was a good way to learn about different insurances and the benefits and pitfalls of putting your money in different places. And those add-ons are hilarious because they are always in use in different events, especially in the last round. Like, out of the world add-on. You can get hit by a meteor, an alien, or anything out of this world. And it actually works. <laughs> and now it's time for the book of the week, The Babysitter's Club, Christie's Big Day. This book was written by Anne Martin. Language to the back of the book. In fact, David, would you like to do the honors? Absolutely. Christie's mom is getting married and Christie is going to be a bridesmaid. The only problem, 14 kids are coming to town for the wedding. What will they do? Well, this is an Arab book with one whole point. It's rated for third grade and second month. That is not a lot of points because it's a graphic novel. But the subject matter is made for teens. So, a lot of teen books, uh, books for teenagers. That's true. So book six of the Babysitter's Club, we start off with Christy and Karen and Andrew talking about ghosts and Andrew was scared all right. And then they got called in for dinner. Next, the mom pulls everyone aside and tells everyone at the wedding would be like next year or so but then they had to sell their old house because someone's getting remarried and then they have to move into a different house 
So now they have to do it in two weeks because people want to buy the house by the earliest time. So then Christy gets to be a bridesmaid and she, for the wedding, and she is so excited. I can't wait to read this because I love a really good ghost story, and this sounds excellent. Mm -hmm. Then the mom gets unhappy because there will be 14 kids coming over for the wedding that are from out of town. And now school's over for the babysitter's club, so now they get to go babysit for a while for the summer. And now they're getting paid double their club rate in extra if they babysit the people during the wedding. That's not a bad way to spend a summer making extra money. <laughs> True. Well, I give the Babysitter's Club Christy's Big Day 12 out of 10 stars because I liked what Christy made for her parents for the wedding. And now it's time for our interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing David Matthew Barnes. David is a writer of 16 novels, three collections of poetry, seven short stories, and more than 70 stage plays, and so much more. Thank you so much, Tiberius. I appreciate it. No problem. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I'm having a great time. This is an awesome show. Sweet. Okay, so to start off, you were listed as a screenwriter and movie critic. I would like to start off with the screenwriting. Can you explain to my listeners exactly what is a screenwriter and how is that different from a person that writes a book? That's an excellent question. So as a screenwriter, I write scripts for movies and for television also. Uh, so I come up with an idea in my imagination and then I put it on paper and then filmmakers, movie makers take the script and they turn it into a film that people can watch on the big screen at a movie theater or on television on a streaming network. Uh, and I do the same for television as well. It's a little bit different from writing a book uh, because of the format, the way that the screenplay is written is a little bit different on the page than a book. Mm -hmm. Now, I was in a holiday play a few years ago, and they had instructions on where to look and the inflection of the words when you were saying your lines. Mm -hmm. Do all screenwriters go into that kind of detail when writing a play? You know, it really depends on the play, but sometimes you do because you really got to think of a script, whether it's for a play or for a movie or for a TV show, as an architectural blueprint. So really my job as the writer is to create a map for the actors like you were on stage. And so if I have to give you some extra uh, words of how to deliver a line or say something or do something, it's really there just to make sure that the original idea comes across when it's performed. Okay, so how long have you been a screenwriter? I've been a screenwriter since uh, for over 20 years, about 25 years, very long time. Wow. <laughs> a good part of my life I've been a screenwriter. I started very young. Wow. So what got you interested in writing plays? I got interested in writing plays because I was in plays, like you were in the holiday play. I was in holiday plays too when I was younger in school. And I was really interested in, in the idea of coming up with me coming up with the idea and telling a story on stage. And I uh, saw a lot of plays and I read a lot of plays and I said, this is exactly what I want to do. This is for me. Okay. So what is the best part about working in this business? Oh, by far, it's meeting all the really cool people, including yourself. I, my writing has led me to be able to meet really extraordinary people doing really awesome things. Thank you. So does You're this welcome. take a lot of training to be a screenwriter? You know, it does. I think if you want to be a really good screenwriter or be really good at whatever you do, you have to study it. So I went to school for a long time to study screenwriting, and I'm really glad that I did because I was able to learn about all the people who had done screenwriting before me. Wow. Now, how does writing plays make the world a better place? Oh, that's a great question. I really feel that a really good play can offer people comfort or uh, a different way of thinking about things or a different way of looking at the world. But what I hope to do with my plays is to offer people a, a version of themselves in the characters that I write and the stories that I tell. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a list of a ton of awards that you've received from your screenplays. Mm -hmm. Which award are you most proud of and why? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always incredibly grateful when anybody acknowledges my work as a screenwriter. But the one that probably changed my life the most, I, I won an award all the way over in Amsterdam on the other side of the world. And um, that award led to a really great uh, collaboration between me and a, a Dutch filmmaker 
who ended up uh, producing uh, one of my my best films called Wagon, which did really well in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. So that nice. that award changed changed the direction of my life, as they say. That's cool. Now, what was the hardest play to write? The hardest play to write for me probably um, was probably The Truants, which is a play that I wrote about young people in high school uh, trying to sort of find their way. Uh, because it was so close to home, I don't write a lot of stuff about my own life, but that one kind of came from my own life. So I think it was it was okay. more difficult in a different way, for sure. I understand that. Now, my dad said that you were also a movie critic or someone that reviews movies. Which job was more fun, writing plays or reviewing movies? Oh, definitely reviewing movies. I love movies, and I love to be able to go and watch movies and see movies and then write about them and share my thoughts and ideas about the movie with, with people who uh, want to read a great review. Mm -hmm. So which one is harder? Uh, definitely writing plays. <laughs> writing plays, I think, is a lot more difficult because there's so much research involved. I, I have to do a lot of research. There's a lot of um, rewriting a lot that of you steps. have to do. A lot of steps. A lot of, but you know, all those steps are so important because it leads to a great, hopefully, a great finished product. Mm -hmm. So, when it comes to reviewing movies, what type of movies do you enjoy reviewing the most, and why? Well, I have to tell you, my favorite movies are scary movies. I like horror movies. I always Thank have. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so I who likes horror. Right? Yeah, we can we can be uh, both people who love horror movies. But horror movies, I don't know why you love horror movies, but I love them because you know who doesn't love a good scare, right? Exactly. Something that's kind of spooky and scary. Uh, but that's that's uh, what I love to watch and review the most. And there's a lot of them, uh, a lot of good new scary movies out. I like scary <laughs> stuff. Yeah, me too. I mean, I'm kind of like the Christmas spirit, but eh, <laughs> more <than> scary. <laughs> so what is the best part about writing movie reviews? Oh, you know, all the movies that I get to see. I mean, it's, you know, it's a very fun job because I get to go and watch movies and then write, write about them. And I get to see movies a lot of times before they come out in the theaters. And so I'm one of nice. the first people that gets to see them and talk about them and write about them. And uh, yeah, it's great. And I love it. It's, it's, that's definitely the best part. Mm -hmm. Now I review books and video games, but if I don't like them, I just skip it so I can have more positive reviews. My dad tries to get me to review the ones I don't like as well. Do you ever give any bad reviews? Um, I don't know if I would call them bad reviews, but I think that sometimes, you know, uh, a movie might have an issue or a weak spot or something in it. And I definitely do include that in my review because I think it's important to write an honest review and, and to really go over everything that's there in the film. Does it take uh, away a star? Right. Yeah. Sometimes I have to. Yeah. I work on the star system too. Actually, my reviews also have buckets of popcorn. So if I ah. give something five buckets of popcorn, it's an awesome movie. But if it's, you know, two or three, then there's some problems with the movie. Normally movies for me would probably be four. Yeah. But if that's it's worth, really good, yeah. right. five stars. Yeah, it's like I think I think you know, you can always sort of find something in there to like, right? And then yeah, and yeah for sure. So, what is the hardest part about working and writing movie reviews? Uh, the time, just being able. Sometimes I see a movie uh, on a Thursday night, and I have to turn the review in very early the next morning for the for the movie website Release. that I work for. Yeah, so it's sometimes you only have a few hours to get that review done. So it's quick. It's a lot of very quick time. Not a lot mm -hmm. of time. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could think of one thing that would make your job easier, what would it be? Oh, well, well uh, maybe an assistant. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think uh, just more time. More, I would love to have more time in the day to get everything Understand done. Understand it. Yeah. Now, it says here that you are an expert on Disney movies. I am. What are yeah. the best Disney movies and why? You know, I like, I, I have to, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm a purist. I'm an old-fashioned Disney fan because I like a lot of the older films from uh, the early days of Walt Disney uh, creating, you know, so forth. Cinderella is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies, the original Cinderella. Uh, but I also like uh, The Jungle Book. I have to tell you, I think The Jungle Book has one of the best soundtracks of a Disney, the, the cartoon version. But growing up, I, I, Pete's Dragon, the original Pete's Dragon with uh, ah. Imaginary Dragon, one of my all-time favorite films. And Disney just does great work and makes great movies. Okay. 
Now, what is the greatest challenge that most screenwriters are dealing with today? Uh, probably that there's so many people writing movies, but I, I think, and there's, so there's competition there for sure. But uh, I think one of the greatest challenges is that today there are so many different streaming networks that there's such a demand for scripts. And a lot of screenwriters, we, we work really hard and really quickly to keep up with that demand. Mm -hmm. So what is the craziest situation that you've run into while writing plays or moving movies? Um, well, you know, often people tell me great stories that I, my friends, my families, they'll share with me a great story. And I sometimes will take that story and turn it into a play. And then I forget that where it came from. And I'll tell you, my friend Tara went to go see one of my plays when she was in Boston. And she called me the next day. I said, did you like the play? And she said, yeah, but it was a story about me when I went to summer camp in the eighth grade. and I'd forgotten that I used her story to turn it into wow. a play. So that was pretty crazy for sure. It's just, you know, nice. yeah. I tell all my friends, you know, every story they tell me is fair game. <laughs> so. so what advice should you give to my listeners if they wanted to grow up and review movies? You know, I think, uh, if you love movies, if you're passionate about movies, I think the more movies that you see, the better. What I recommend is getting a journal and just writing down all of your thoughts about every movie that you see. And then from there, start to shape those journal entries into actual reviews. And I think a lot of film film companies and filmmakers, they want to know from young, young viewers their thoughts on movies. So I think there's a great place in this industry for young movie reviewers. We need them. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to get my dad to let me add movie reviews to my show. Oh, you should. I'm all for that. <laughs> I want to do movie facts as well because I yeah. know a lot of movie facts. Yeah, that would be really cool. You could even do like movie trivia kind of yeah. ask questions and so forth. Yeah. A quick fun fact. Uh, you know the Cloudy and a Chance of Meatballs? Yes. You know that movie, right? So I when do all the well. uh, presidents got pied in the face, mm -hmm. except Abraham Lincoln, he was pied in the back of his head. Because that's how he died. Yeah, I know. Isn't that kind of, it's kind of wild. Like, kind of crazy. That's a great whoa. movie. Is that one of your favorite movies? Yeah. It's you one of the mean? greatest movies of all time, yeah, I guess. It's a great film. Mm -hmm. So when you were a kid, what did you mm -hmm. want to do when you grew up? Did you always know that you are going to be a screenwriter? No, I wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I wanted to fly planes. And then I, I rode on a couple of planes and I, I got, I was like, this is not for me. Uh, you know, when I was in the second grade, I wrote a, uh, my teacher, Mrs. Carter asked me to write a, a write, have us all write a, a story for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a five page story when I was seven uh, called the blue witch about a witch who didn't want to be a witch anymore. And uh, she kept me after class. I thought I was in trouble. She called my mom. I thought I was in big trouble. And then she said, you know, I think he's going to be a writer. And so it was because of Mrs. Carter that I became a writer. Wow. Really good. Yeah. Well, do you love have any teachers. specific yeah, advice teachers. for aspiring writers out there? Yes, I do. I think what's important is to, to write. Don't be scared to write. A lot of times people won't write because they're scared what people will think about their story or what they're saying. But I say go for it. Don't be scared. Write without fear. Uh, don't be scared to do it. Put your, uh, you know, everybody out there has got at least one great story in them that only they can tell. And I think it's so important if you want to be a writer to tell your story. Do it. We need your stories. Mm -hmm. I run a radio show and podcast that talks about God to my line strong mm -hmm. segment. How do you include God's message in your work? Um, you know, I do a lot. A lot of my work is faith-based, if you will. And um, I also work, I have a, a beautiful church family, and I work a lot with our youth ministry and writing plays for the young people that are members of our church. And I feel like um, plays are a really great way to get really good, important, positive messages out there because it gets people to talk about them after they've seen the plays. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's uh, really important when you have an opportunity to Put in good, strong, positive messages in your work that can can reflect uh, all of God's teachings. Smart. Now, what was the first job that you ever had? Oh, my first job I ever had, I was 13 and I had a paper route and I had 140 papers. I had to deliver every morning. At, I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning. So before I even went to school, I had to deliver 140 newspapers. And I wow. got on my bicycle and rode around my neighborhood and delivered all the newspapers. Anything you learned from that job that helped you to be a better screenwriter or movie critic? 
Yeah, definitely. I think from my first job delivering all those newspapers, I just learned to work really hard. And I learned that by working really hard, you appreciate all the things you get because of working hard. So I definitely took all those skills into being a screenwriter, movie critic, especially uh, writing movies, writing reviews for movies takes a lot of dedication and concentration. And so I got a lot of that from my very first job. Mm -hmm. Well, who helped motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? I would definitely have to say teachers. I had really wonderful, extraordinary teachers growing up. Nice. Uh, and also librarians, uh, school librarians and my local librarians, knowing how much I loved books, introduced me to really great books that later helped shape my writing as a writer. Uh, so definitely teachers. I've had extraordinary teachers and I'm very grateful to them even to this day. Okay. Well, what message do you want to tell children all over the world about the work that you do? You know, really what I am, I'm just a, a, a storyteller. I love to tell stories. And if you are listening to this and you love to tell stories too, maybe consider becoming a writer and telling your own stories. I think that it's a really wonderful, fun thing to do. And I encourage anyone listening who wants to be a writer or is thinking about it to just go for it. Okay. What was the biggest mistake you ever made and how did it change you as a person? Um, the biggest mistake I ever made, the biggest mistake I ever made probably was not taking um, school as serious as I should have when I was quite younger. Um, I, I, you know, it was about having fun and playing sports and doing all kinds of other stuff instead of <laughs> concentrating on my homework. So I guess my biggest mistake I ever made was not concentrating enough on my homework because mm -hmm. later I had to relearn a lot of stuff that I could, should have, could have learned a lot earlier in life. Mm -hmm. So when you're not working on writing, what do you do for fun? I love, well, of course I love to read. I love to read books, but I love to travel. I've been really fortunate. That I've got to travel all over the world as a result of being a writer. And I really enjoy that. I love meeting new people and learning about new cultures. Do you play video games? And if you do, what's your favorite one? I do. I just got a PlayStation 5. And I tell you, I like all the, all the fun, uh, I, I, I'm a big trivia fan, so I like um, a lot of the game show <laughs> stuff. Nice. But I tell you, my favorite is Monopoly. <laughs> I know that sounds pretty boring, but I love it. It's good. That's it's got really a lot of fun. Stuff. Yeah, it is. It's good for the whole family to play. Well, do you have one on your phone? I do. I do. On my phone, I play um, a really fun solitaire game. I love playing uh, solitaire. It's a, it's a nice kind of distraction when I take a quick break from writing. Solitaire is really fun. Mm -hmm. So, what is your favorite book to read? I mean, one that oh, my not favorite written. book to read. My favorite book to read um, would have to be uh, a book called Jane Emily. It's a really creepy ghost story that I read when I was a child about a young girl who goes to live with her aunt and finds out that the house is haunted. It's a really great book for kids. I'm sure I would like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. This is a big boy question. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell me that one story, you know, remember, this is a kid's show, okay? Mm -hmm. But that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on, you can tell me. Um, I will tell you that one time I worked at a job as a temp, a temp, uh, temporary employee, and um, they, it was a finance company, and a bunch of sirens went off <laughs> in the building, and there was an announcement over the speakers that the server was down, and I was oh. not a computer person at the time, so I thought we had to evacuate the building because the server was down, so I grabbed my things and left. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it taught me to learn a lot more about computers. That is hilarious. But, yeah, the server was down, so I got, grabbed my things and left the building because I thought we were evacuating. Well, is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? Just, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to uh, to be here. And thanks so much, Tiberius, for letting me have this great time to talk about my work. And for your listeners, too, I just want to encourage everybody to read and to write and to uh, be as creative as you possibly can and to keep using your imagination. Sweet. Well, do you have a Facebook for my listeners who want to follow you? I do. I'm, you can find me on Facebook at David Matthew Barnes, my name, uh, and I'm there. And I'm on all social media platforms. So if anybody wants to reach out or their parents want to reach out or librarians or teachers, I'm always happy to talk to people about nice. what I do. What is that one question that you think I forgot to ask about you? 
You know, I don't think you forgot to ask anything because you're a terrific interviewer. This is one of the best yeah. interviews I've ever done. So thank you. I appreciate it. Wow. That is a really good compliment. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, David, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? I certainly can. Thank you. Tiberius's favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Thank you so much, David, for your help with Math Corners. This week, we're going to some more multi-step word problems. My dad is always good at finding new problems for me to solve. Today, we're going to talk about fast food. That sounds awesome. Can't wait. Ooh, this one's about me. Tiberius gets to spend some of his money at McDonald's. For breakfast, Tiberius eats a hash brown for $1.60 and a glass of chocolate milk for $0.75. At lunch, Tiberius spent two dollars and five cents on a hamburger and a dollar ten on sprite how much money did tabu spend on lunch more than on breakfast now this is a real world problem because people do love to go to mcdonald's but i think it costs way more than what they're using in the word problems but let's just go with it so to start off you have to get the total that tabu spends in the morning and what he spent for lunch. So in the morning, we have to add the dollar sixteen to seventy five cents and get two dollars and thirty five cents. Now, for lunch, you have to add the two dollars and five cents and the dollar and ten cents, and then you get three dollars and fifteen cents. So now I have to answer the question. You have to subtract the breakfast total from the lunch, and then you get zero per one, and ah, you get eighty cents. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So, David, do you think you can get a lunch for a little over $3? Definitely. It's called dollar hamburgers. <laughs> right. Value menu. <laughs> yes. Now, David, my teacher said that I would use math every day. Do you use math in your work? I do. Absolutely. Yes. Especially uh, with contracts and percentages. It's very important to know math. Sure it is. Thank you so much, David, for your help with Math Corners. You're very welcome. And now it's time for the Heart of a Lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the Heart of a Lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and ability. This All week, really important things. <laughs> that is true. This week, we're going to talk about leadership. For me, I think leadership is the act of loving what is good, having self-control, and being disciplined. The qualities of leadership are providing guidance and direction, organization, and being a positive influence on others. Well, this week, we had a house competition. We had to draw on a chalkboard. We're supposed to draw something related to a Christmas song that mentioned Jesus. Then, the lower school kids got to guess which song each picture was representing. This allowed the upper school kids to be leaders and an example of guidance and direction to the lower school kids. It allowed them to see the importance of Jesus in the holiday songs. We got decked the halls, so it was kind of hard. So, David, did you see your youth leadership at all this week? Oh, absolutely. I see extraordinary leadership in my community, within my family, uh, and even in what I do with uh, with extraordinary leaders that I get to work with. And leadership is such a wonderful thing because you're paving the way for others to follow. Nice. Of all of the Heart of a Lion virtues, which do you see the most? You know, I really, I, I notice integrity a lot. I've noticed that this week, you know, during the holiday season, I think it's tough for everybody to maintain integrity, but I've seen some really great examples of that, of people uh, staying true to who they are, which I think is very important. Which integrity is doing something right when no one else is looking, correct? That's, yes, that's exactly what it is. Nice. Well, we should always try and be lying strong in everything we do, shouldn't we? Absolutely. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing David Matthew Barnes for being on my show. It has been so much fun talking with you today. I think we learned a lot about what it's like to be a screenwriter and a movie critic. 
Oh, thank you so much, Tiberius. And I just want to, you're, you're awesome at what you do and keep up the great work because you're doing really wonderful things. And I just appreciate the opportunity to be here to tell everybody about the cool, very cool job that I get to do every day. Thank you. Do you mind giving your website again? Oh, sure. My website is dmatthewb.com, which is D-M-A-T-T-H-E-W-B.com. Sweet. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Tybee You Show. And please be sure to visit The Tybee You Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on The Tybee You Show with your host, Tybee. Yes, boy! That's a wrap. And booyah!